Have you ever been super jealous on social media, seeing the amazing finds that other people seem to get? Hey guys, it's Melissa Morrow with Vintage Bee Design. This weekend, I am gonna show you step-by-step -step on a couple of DIYs and then on a couple of others, I am just going to show you the overall and kind of talk you through because they have similar steps and no reason to repeat the DIY. With our first fall market being only about a month away, I spent this week trying to mass produce several small items, things that would be worth under $20 or ideally under $10 that I could do quickly. This DIY project is going to be sunflower bowl fillers. In this case, I'm using a small IKEA bowl. It is probably about six inches in diameter and I'm tracing it out on two layers of fabric. The orange fabric will be the outside the petal area of my flower and so I have a smaller circle for the inside. I am also tracing this again on two layers of muslin and I would say this is probably about three inches in diameter. Because I want my sunflower to have a more traditional center, I'm also using this jute ribbon that I happen to have left over from making wreaths. I am going to cut a single layer for each of the sunflower centers, and I'm not gonna bother to cut the circle. I just need to make sure they're large enough to go around the circle. They need to be slightly larger. I have five layers in total, two of the orange fabric, two of the muslin, and one layer of the burlap. And now I just need to layer them up and pin them together and head over to my sewing machine. Now I'm at my sewing machine and I'm gonna put two pins sort of just to create a space where I remember not to sew so that I can use that area to stuff. I'm gonna sew from pin to pin on the long part of the pie there, and I'm gonna try to stay very close to the edge. You can kind of see the muslin through the burlap, and I'm using that as my guideline. Leaving that gap. And I'm only gonna go around one time, so it's about three quarters, you know, away around the circle. And you can see that I've left just a big enough gap to be able to put some stuffing in there. I happen to have stuffing right at my feet, so I'm just gonna fill these up. Uh, so they're, you've got a nice bulge in the center of that sunflower, but it's not so much that I can't use my machine to sew it up. I want this to be a uniform center, so I am just gonna go outside of there. And then once I get that, that opening closed up, I'm actually gonna go around one more time. That way I make sure that it is all secure Going around it twice will help keep the jute from fraying and falling apart. Now it's time to go ahead and trim up that jute. So being careful not to cut the orange pieces underneath, I'm just going around where I have sewed it. And by letting it stay in its larger form and cutting it after it's sewn, it keeps the jute from fraying when you're stuffing it. The first couple I did, I did not do this. I cut the circle out of the jute just like the other pieces. And I found that the parts where I had left it open to stuff by opening it up and closing it and opening it up, then it was letting the jute fall apart. Once I've got that all trimmed up, then I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut some slices for the petals all the way around. You can do as many or as few as you like. Just remember, you want it to be pretty uniform throughout. And that gives us a nice fluffy one. However, I don't really want it fluffy. I want it, you know, to look old and worn and the edges to be all curled up. So I am using some spray starch, the kind that you would use if you were starching your clothes when ironing. And I'm just gonna spray this on the top and on the bottom of the sunflower, right at the little ruffly petal areas. And I'm gonna make sure that this is fully saturated. Now I am using flannel, so other materials like cotton might do this differently, but I do find starch to be really helpful in this process. And I'm just gonna, you know, sort of ruffle up those edges really nicely and I'm gonna do this to all of my pieces. After they are heavily starched, I'm gonna throw them in the dryer, set it on less dry permanent press, that way it's not too hot, and voila, we are done. And it gets those nice ruffly edges. You can embellish this 
with tags and bows and buttons and whatever you like. I will suggest if you do buttons that you do it before the sewing part. Earlier in the spring, I made a bunch of these little three by five blocks that are all from scrap wood and I sold out of almost all of my 4th of July ones. So I wanna go ahead and make some more. I'm gonna be using napkins for this and I'm gonna start off by using my DIY dark and decrepit and staining all of the sides except for the face of the blocks. I painted the front of my blocks with DIY paint in vintage linen, which is just a nice um, cool white. And then I am going to use my napkins to um, do a little bit of decoupage. I have a couple that I have left over from winter last year in my stash. I didn't have to open a new pack. And I am going to be sure to peel apart all of the plies. I just want to be left with the top ply. Now some of the napkins are two ply and some are three. If they do not have a print when you are pulling them away on the the white one you can also save those in your stash for doing stamping projects where you stamp and then decoupage that so really you can get a lot of projects out of a set of napkins and I do want to let you know that I do have some napkin variety packs sort of a grab bag it is 20 napkins random napkins they will each of the 20 will be different and you will get um, all season of decor napkins and for the 20 napkins it is only $9.99 so you can look those up in our store at vintagebedesign.com now for these projects i'm actually going to use both of these gnomes or rather each of these gnomes on a block so on one napkin i'm actually going to get eight different patterns i will cut apart my gnome sections um, so that it separates them and then I will sort of lay each gnome out on one of these three by five blocks. Using my DIY liquid patina, I am going to add a generous layer on top of these blocks and then lay out my gnomes to a pattern that I like. Don't make it too goopy, but you do definitely want to have enough that the gnome adheres well. And then I'm going to let this dry before adding another coat over the top. You can see just how cute each of these little gnomes is all on their own. If you wanted, you could put them side by side so they effectively match the napkin as it was and possibly sell them as a set. That's entirely up to you. I wanted to just focus on the block individually. For my little deer, I'm doing something very similar. I wanted to cut apart the Have a Merry Christmas so that it was independent of the deer and I could actually have a separate block for that if I wanted to. Once each of your blocks is completely dry, you wanna add a coat on top of each block to finish off the piece. This will seal it in and it will uh, you will not need a top coat after this it'll make it very durable once your second layer of diy liquid patina is completely dry you'll simply use some 220 grit sandpaper and sand off the leftover tissue now i will say that my sandpaper is really old this works much better if you have sandpaper that it you know has a little bit of grit left to it now i do like to sand the tops of mine as well wrinkles don't bother me and i feel like that gives it a nice smooth surface seriously how cute is he decoupage is such a fun relaxing and rewarding project i love how these came out let me know what you think do you love them do you hate them do you think they're silly i'm i'm super curious what you think about these and here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. Links are in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. For this next project, I am going to break out my stamp collection. And these are all redesigned with Prima stamps. I absolutely love their clear, clean stamps and I have a wide variety of them. I keep them in scrapbook albums 
uh, in the 12 by 12 pouches, they are absolutely perfect for keeping everything organized. In this case, I'm going to mix and match a bunch of the different stamps, and I'm going to use a large variety. I am using an IOD ink pad. I have found that to be one of the best ink pads that I have. And so I'm just going to pick out which stamps I want to use for this. And we have a, a little grid pattern that I can attach them to, which makes laying out a variety of different stamps all together very easy. In this case, I'm going to use a couple of butterflies and it's like a row of dots. And I'm going to stamp them right here on this little square of muslin. And this square is probably about six inches by six inches. And you can see just how lovely this comes out. For my next square, I'm going to use one of my favorite uh, stamps. And it just has a lot of different script patterns. And this one is probably about Mm, I don't know about maybe seven by seven and I'm going to put it right over my little block so that it stamps very nicely on my block and then I am going to use a, another stamp and stamp this is more of a botanical type stamp and I'm going to stamp right over the wording and it's going to give a little bit of a different impact one of the things that I love is with the stamps being clear, I can see exactly where I need to put them down. Okay, so just like we did the sunflowers earlier, I did the same thing where I sewed uh, two layers of muslin and a layer of burlap and then stuffed between the two layers of burlap. But instead of it being the center of my sunflower, I actually used the muslin, which I had stamped on top, stuffed it and did it exactly the same way. These look puffier because the circle is bigger so I was able to get more stuffing but also because it doesn't have the petals to kind of keep it tighter when I was stuffing it. And then all I did was actually glued it to a spindle and then glued it to a round base. I added some moss and then I did little ruffles around which I did by hot gluing around the um the spindles so you can see I have a variety of different types of spindles here that different heights different sizes all of the circles were done the same way and these I hot glued the buttons on just sort of in a layering pattern but I wanted you to see all the different ways that I have stamped. So this is a single bumblebee that I just did in sort of a random pattern. This is the words that I used earlier. This was a bee and you can kind of see the laurels that were around here. Now this one is interesting because it kind of bulbed up really a lot when I glued it on. And this would be a great pin cushion. Um, I did some damask. Here is one of the ones where this is the butterflies and some of that botanical. So these were a lot of fun. I added a tag to some. So they're all just a little bit unique, but basically this is exactly the same way that I made the centers to the sunflowers. I didn't start, I didn't put them in the dryer, but they have this nice frayed edge the important thing is, again, that I found that it was best not to trim the burlap until you actually had sewed the entire thing together. That kept it from the burlap shredding as I was filling it. I love the variety of this project with all the different types of spindles, the different stamps, the different embellishments. This was just so much fun. I would love to hear your feedback. Would you try to do this project? What did you like about it? What do you not like about it? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And so for the last of my projects for this week that I got done, I got these adorable little kitty cats made um, as bowl fillers. You can kind of see the shape. And I am going to work on getting these uploaded so I can give you the free shapes here in the next week or so. I just did not have time this week. But ultimately, this was done very similarly, except that I did turn it inside out after I sewed it because I didn't want the raw edges. Uh, when you're doing projects like this, one of the tricks that I have learned is it is best to sew on the embellishment before you actually do the entire sewing up 
because these are really hard to do once a little kitty is stuffed and done. And these whiskers are just part of that jute that I had, the, um, the jute ribbon. I just pulled out strings and then with a needle, I, I put it through the eye of the needle at one end and then I just pulled it through and then, you know, took it off so that it would be on either side. And that's how I made the little kitty whiskers. The bow is two strands, about six inches long, just tied in a knot and hot glued to his base. And then I did his little tag the same way that I did the tags for the chickens last week. And I do like how the Adobe House stamp ink really gives this a nice rustic edge. So I am super pleased with him. I did do a bunch of different little faces all using leftover scraps from some pumpkins that I haven't showed you yet. I will show you those probably next week, but I don't have them quite finished, so they're not going in this video. So these little guys are 100% my pattern, and I think they're pretty charming, but let me know what you think. Are they too primitive, too modern? Um, how do they fit in to the bowl filler crowd that's happening this year? And to wrap up today's video, I wanted to show you the amazing haul that I got today. Thank you so much, Crystal, for giving Sue and I all of this amazing stuff. You know some amazing projects are coming very soon using the heck out of them. Crystal, Hello. what do you, uh, what do you got for me today? All kinds of stuff. Doing a garage clean out? Yes. Watching you, I've been inspired, and <laughs> I don't have time with my kids. So Crystal got these. She watches our channel, and she thought she would do some of the things that we do. Well, I have done a lot. But you have fun. I had a booth, but I had to get rid of it, so oh. I just don't have time. So she messaged me on Facebook and said, "Here, come and get this stuff if you want it." And we said, yes, please. My husband's grateful. <laughs> but it's been it's been a little challenging trying to, to get here with the 4th of July weekend. So we're pretty excited about taking stuff. I'm curious about these little boxes. Oh, they're empty. They were silverware. Oh. Oh, I see. Look, Sue, tiny drawers. Tiny drawers. If you enjoyed today's content, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and let your friends know about it. It really helps out the channel.